The first thing you notice is that Samsung puts everything into a nice, eco-friendly package. And there's lines that you can cut right here on each side if you want to. There's two feet, and that's that new snap-in feet. And then we have a setup guide as well as some packing. Here's what the feet look like, and they're not adjustable, so you can't raise the TV up and down. And they have a left and right indicator on there that matches up with the TV. Make sure that the feet are aimed outwards. And then just put in a slot and snap it into place. Easy to put in, easy to take out. So here's the new remote control. And one thing I don't notice is the voice command button, but we'll see if it has any kind of features like that when I get the TV set up. But overall, don't have that solar panel and it uses two AAA batteries, as you can see right there. Also want to show you guys the previous model. And this is the remote control that comes with the TU7000. A lot of people didn't like this design because it, you know, it seems kind of bulky, but I like the fact that it still has a settings button at the bottom, the volume, all the buttons if you want to use the TV tuner. But that's the one that comes with it. And the great thing is that you can still buy these on Amazon for around $10. And you can still use that if you really want it. So now we're going to take a look at the design of the TV. And it looks very similar to the TU7000 on the back of it. it. has this nice little texture to it. And there's some screw holes so you can mount it on the wall. This one also has the theme of the new... 2023 series, and then you have plenty of inputs. First of all, you have your power cord input. This one has a USB as well as a fiber optic. And then there's three HDMIs, which is improvement. So Samsung is listening that don't make TVs with two inputs. And this one is eARC, so you can hook it up to a soundbar, as well as an ATSC TV tuner, and you do have a LAN connection. Now, when it comes to wire maintenance, you have these little grooves here and Use this little plastic clip, which is not really the best design, but I guess it's better than not having anything at all. And this is what it looks like with all the wires connected. And you can see, actually it's better than I thought when you actually put it all together. The last thing we need to do is just pull off these, uh, these little plastic pieces. And this is used to protect TV whenever it's shipped. And this TV does have a screen protector on it. And this is a 55 inch. You're gonna see a red tab down here, just like the other videos I showed you. And then we're just going to go ahead and pull that off. Now, before we get it set up, last few things I want to show you is that it does come with an energy savings guide. If we take that out, you're also going to find a digital tape around the edges. As far as design, this one is actually a little bit thicker than the other models. And that's what it looks like around the edge. At the bottom over here, you do have the Samsung logo. And if you press the button, you can see that you can change the channels up and down, the volume up and down, as well as the source, but you can't control the applications. And that's what the feet looks like on the TV. Next, I'm gonna show you quickly how to set this TV up. I'll just skip through a lot of the steps because I made plenty of videos on that. But there's two ways you can set up this TV and most Samsung TVs in general. One of them is using your smartphone. And what you wanna do is download an application from Samsung called Smart Things. All you would do is just go ahead Press on this and then you'll get a barcode and with your phone, you can go ahead and scan it. It'll find the TV, let you set everything up from the application. You don't even need the remote control. The second way is to go over here and do a step by step with the remote control. And that's what we're going to do on this video real quick. And uh, one thing I want to point out is that in the comment section, people are telling me that they're buying TVs and it's constantly dropping the Wi-Fi. Well, I have fiber optic that's in another room and there's no way to run an ethernet cable all the way in here to support my networks. So what I use is the Nighthawk AX6000 repeater. Now, the great thing about the Nighthawk is that it takes the signal from the Wi-Fi I have in the other room and then it repeats it in here. But the thing is it supports the Wi-Fi 6, it has 2.4 gigahertz, five gigahertz, everything in between. And I have never dropped a signal with that particular device in my setup. So just want to mention that to you guys and I'll leave a link in the description if you want to check it out. There's not an ad or anything like that. I just want to show you guys what I'm using. So with that being said, let's go ahead and get this set up. So first thing I'm going to do is go ahead and press on the remote control and you see it found all my devices that I actually have in the back of it. Now it's asking me to turn on the devices. And after turning them on, you can see that they are connected. We'll go ahead and press on Start Auto Setup. Now, if you don't have an Ethernet connection plugged in, you want to go ahead and install your Wi-Fi with a password. And one thing I will point out is that it's finding 5 gigahertz, and that's important to get the best streaming quality. The 2.4 is good, but not as good. Now it's connected to my Wi-Fi. You get some term and conditions. Then the TV looks for current updates. 
If you plan on downloading an application or using Bixby, you'll need to create a Samsung account if you don't have one. Or you can use your remote control and type everything in. So you can see I use this account a lot for demos and pretty much I just clicked on one button and it signed me right in. Now if you want to, you can add a PIN number. You can also choose to back up the TV settings on your cloud if you want to. You can add a zip code for your TV tuner settings. Then it's gonna give you a preview that it found some channels as well as your PlayStation, the Xbox, and the wireless, and the email that I'm using. You're done, you can start using the TV. Now, when I decided to make this video, I just wanted to go over some of the basic things that most people want to learn when buying a new TV, and I'll come out with a full review where we'll just cut through the chase, and I'll do some demos and show you guys everything you like. But today, I'm gonna to give you a couple of samples. For example, I put this TV on live programming, and I want to check out some sporting events, and overall, it looked pretty clean. The motion was really good, and then I went into the picture settings and played around with that. And overall, you know, being a budget television, I think this one's gonna be a pretty good one. And this was someone who wants to save a little bit of money on a budget television in comparison, and they really like the Samsung lineup. I also want to switch over to Disney Plus and show you guys a more fast action scene, and this is in movie mode. It looks a lot better, but again, it's not really popping out like I think it should compared to some other TVs that I've seen. It's because when you review televisions, I've been able to use the OLEDs all the way down to the mini LEDs and everything in between. But I had to remember for the average consumer, I think you'll be very happy and pleased with this TV. But let's dive a little bit deeper in this video. Well, first of all, all the CU7000s are all VA panels and you can see that it has really good contrast. It just falls a little bit short of showing you different tones of gray level as you can see right here. And I pulled up this all white screen and as you can notice on the edges you can see a lot of vignetting happening and it's a little more bright in the center so it's kind of like you can see those backlights. Now I did this dot test to show the darkness versus the lightness and actually I was very impressed. In my opinion it may actually look better than the CU8000 that I just got through reviewing but we'll check it out when I get a chance to do a comparison. So I did show you guys some of the live action but this is what's happening behind the scenes. The motion is definitely a little jittery, but you can go into the settings and change the judder. And I'll check that out on my main review when I go into a deep dive. And last thing I want to check out on this video is basically show you guys a blooming test. And being that it uses the edge lit and everything like that, I think it actually does a pretty good job, especially over some of the other TVs I've been seeing that cost a lot more money. Now the CU7000 does have a 10 watt by two amplifier. And I uh, wanted to let you guys hear a sample of it, but you want to put headphones on to get the best sound quality. I just want to show you guys some basic gameplay and overall it's pretty smooth. I mean you're looking at 4K maximum 60 hertz and I think you'll be happy again if you have the right expectations buying this TV. But this is what the game looks like. Just give you guys an example. So this is the last part of this video and now I'm going to show you guys the operating system and some of the functionality that you can do with this TV. This TV is powered by the Tizen 7.0 operating system. It doesn't use Google, so you don't have those APK packs where you can sideload them. But up here you have a search feature, and this is gonna allow you to find your favorite movies, TV shows, game shows, and things like that. Next we have the Gaming Hub, and you can see you can watch a clip there to show you how to use it. But over here you can add your own controller, and here's a list of all the different controllers and the compatibility that works off Bluetooth or non-Bluetooth devices. And if you have the full Xbox service, you can play cloud games. You have Luna from Amazon, GeForce Now, and a few other ones. And this will show you all the different applications that you can play with inside of those. Next, we have media. And under media, this is where you can find all your applications right here. When you log into there, you got a full store. It also supports Samsung TV Plus here in the United States. And that's just basically streaming TV service. It also has an internet browser, so if you hook up a Bluetooth keyboard mouse or one with a dongle, you can then surf the web. And they also have this feature called Connected Devices. This is that SmartThings application that I was showing you earlier. It shows everything that's plugged into it. It doesn't have a camera built in, but you can add a USB camera to it and you can do video conferencing right from the TV. You have workspace, so you can connect directly to all your applications like Microsoft 
and some other features down here. The last thing I'm gonna show you guys is the settings. And this is where you can control your TV speakers, your TV timer for going to bed, your Bluetooth devices, you have a few picture setups, and there's a few other features over here at the side. Now, one thing I want to show you guys under support is that TVs no longer give you instruction manuals, so you can click right here, and there's everything you need to know or learn about TV, including a full guide where you can go through and find out all the features that this TV has to offer. Just in case you was wondering, these are the prices in the United States, and you can see that the 55 inch that I'm using on this video costs $529. And if you're not a Samsung fan, right now you can consider the Sony 55X80K at $699, the Hisense 55U7H at $599, the LG 55 Nano 75UQA at $549, and TCL also has a 55R646 for $599 and this TV has mini LED, which may be much better. So I just want to show you guys some alternatives just in case you wasn't a Samsung fan. And uh, I made most of those videos, so you can go check it out on my channel just by searching the model and tech Steve. With that being said, overall, if you are a Samsung fan, I'm actually pretty happy with this TV. I mean, if you look at, this is where they start for 4K technology, you get everything you want. You got three HDMI inputs. You also have a 60 Hertz panel. It comes with a new remote control, and I think the colors are good. When I did the contrast test, the black levels were on point, and the motion is a little bit um, room for improvement, but we'll play with the judder and stuff like that when I make the full review. With that being said, I want to give a special thanks to all you guys who have subscribed to my channel, and at the end of this video, I'm going to show everyone who has subscribed to my channel in the last seven days. So it's just a shout out for you guys. And I'll do that from time to time and let me know in the comments if you actually like that. But we're still 157,000 subscribers. I was just checking before I started filming this video. We're almost at 158. So my next video, we should be there. And remember, my goal is to be at 200,000 by the end of 2023. Thanks a lot for watching. I'm Tech Steve, and I'll see you guys on the next one. Peace!